<laughs> Hi friends, here I am once again, Papa Dale, with another teaching that comes from the catalog of teachings of the Orthodox Historic Evangelical Christian Church. And we are doing a study of those doctrines. There are more than a hundred of them that we've done videos on, or that we're doing videos on. And we are currently on lesson number 17, uh, which is all about uh, God as the self-existent person that he is. So the Bible study is called, or the lessons are called, uh, Bible in a Nutshell. This is lesson number 17, God is self-existent. So let me put on my glasses here. And look at my notes, and away we go. Bible nutshell, number 17, God is self-existent. In Exodus 3, verse 13 and 14, Moses asked God, quote, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say unto me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, The Lord, in Hebrew Yahweh, sent me unto you. God's response to Moses reveals an essential component of his nature, self-existence. Theologian called this quality aseity. Aseity is from the Latin a, from, and se, self. It is the property by which a being exists of and from itself. It refers to the biblical teaching that God does not depend on any cause other than himself for his existence, that he is self-sufficient and independent of anything outside of himself. He is the one in whom all other things find their source. Greek philosophers would call him the first source or the prime mover. There is an interesting point about the name Yahweh. In Hebrew, there were no written vowels, so the name would translate would transliterate to read yod he vav he or Y-H-V-H. This is called the Tetragrammaton. Its pronunciation comes by using the traditional sounds used in the word Adonai, or Lord. Thus the pronunciation of the sound of the name would be like that of breathing. The Y-H would be... <gasps> The WH would be, <sighs> so a baby's first cry, their first breath, speaks the name of God, confessing to God's self-existence. The Koine Greek term, ego eimi, literally I am, or it is I, is an emphatic form of the copulative verb eimi which is recorded in the Gospels to have been spoken by Jesus on several occasions to refer to himself not with the role of a verb, but playing the role of a name. In the Gospel of John, it occurs seven times with specific titles. It is connected to the passage in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, in which God gives his name as Eya Asher Eya, translated most basically as, I am that I am, or I shall be what I am. In the Hebrew Bible, Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, it is the personal name of God revealed directly to Moses. These usages have been the subject of significant Christological analysis over the centuries. This self-existent nature is conveyed better in Hebrew 
than in English. Linguistic scholars say this, say this is more of a self-description of self-existence than a name. When God then tells Moses, say this to the people of Israel, the Lord has sent you. It is the tetragrammaton for Yahweh and used in verse 15. The point is, God originally describes himself to Moses as self-existent. Perhaps the most significant use of the name I am in the Bible comes from Jesus' own lips. Seven times he spoke the I am in John's gospel. I am the bread of life. John 6, 35. I am the light of the world. John 8, 12. And, and chapter 9, verse 5. I am the door. John chapter 10, verse 9. I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10, verses 11 through 14. I am the resurrection and the life. John chapter 11, verse 25. I am the way the truth, and the life, John chapter 14, verse 6. And I am the true vine, John chapter 15, verses 1 through 5. Each of these statements have deep meaning in Christian theology. The religious leaders of Jesus' day would often try to catch Jesus in heresy, in a lie, or in blaspheming according to their traditions so that they could kill him and be rid of him. For a mere human to claim to be God was punishable by death. In one incident, John chapter 8, the Pharisees challenged Jesus' authority and made an appeal to Abraham as their father. Jesus dismissed their appeal, but since they were so respectful of Abraham, he goes on to tell them how glad Abraham is to see his day. When asked by the crowd how he speaks as if he knows Abraham, Jesus said unto them, Truly, truly, with the greatest of emphasis, I say to you, before Abraham was born, I am. John 8:58. This was rightly seen by the religious rulers as a primary claim that Jesus made to being deity from Exodus 3:14. Jesus was claiming to be the Old Testament Yahweh, the self-existent creator God. So there we have the nutshell about the self-existence of God, of Yahweh, which translates to the self-existence of Jesus, because Jesus said in John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. And so Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit are one God, in three persons, and that God, Yahweh, is self-existent, depending on nobody, the primary cause, the first cause, the cause that causes all other causes, because he exists in a different dimension than the physical, and from that metaphysical dimension, he chose to create a physical reality in which we could exist as his children. Yahweh, God, Jesus, the self-existent God. So you can leave your comments or questions in the comment section below on this video, or you can connect with me on, in Facebook at, on my Facebook page, Dale Warren. Just uh, go to your Facebook page and type in Dale Warren and you'll see my lovely face <laughs> pop up on your screen. I'm pretty recognizable there. And uh, you can ask your questions or you can uh, uh, do a friend request if you'd like. 
Um, but uh, I will see you there. And uh, until you do that, or uh, until the next video comes up, you have a blessed day. Ha, 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 ha.